in this module, we shall study about Sharpe single index model. The modern portfolio theory developed by Harry Markowitz in 1950 is a mean variance criteria for selecting optimum portfolios for an investor. Implementation of Markowitz portfolio selection model, however, requires large number of input data for calculations. Suppose if there are n securities in a portfolio, the Markowitz model requires n expected returns, n variance terms and n into n minus 1 upon 2 covariance terms. We need to reduce the inputs necessary for Markowitz portfolio optimization for making the theory operational. Markowitz suggested that an index to which securities are related may be used for generating covariance terms. In an attempt to simplify the Markowitz model with respect to reducing the covariance estimates, William Sharpe developed a simple and elegant model called as single index model or market model. Before proceeding to the Sharpe single index model or market model, it becomes relevant to understand the following concepts systematic and unsystematic risk, characteristic line. After studying this module, you shall be able to understand the concept of Sharpe single index model, know the systematic and unsystematic risk, learn about the characteristic line, calculate risk and return on security. We shall now discuss the systematic and unsystematic risk. The portfolio theory looks at the investment risk from a different perspective. It divides the total risk as follows. Total risk is equal to market risk plus unique risk or sigma p square is equal to beta p square into sigma m square plus sigma e p square. Equation 1. Market risk or systematic risk. The systematic risk represents that portion of total risk which arises on account of market-wide factors. These risks are caused due to fluctuations in the market and are also called as market risk. Because the market is inherently unpredictable, the systematic risk always exists and is unavoidable. The systematic risk can affect all investment avenues at the same time. The systematic part of the total risk cannot be reduced through diversification. This type of risk accounts for most of the risk in a well diversified portfolio. Components of market systematic risk are equity risk, interest rate risk, currency risk and commodity risk. Each investment you make will face one or more of these components of risk. In this model, the systematic risk component of the total risk variance that occurs on account of economy wide movement is represented through beta p square into sigma m square. It is measured through beta and continues to exist in spite of the extent of portfolio diversification. The possibility for an investor to experience losses due to factors that affect the overall performance of the financial markets. Market risk, also called systematic risk, cannot be eliminated through diversification, though it can be hedged against. The risk that a major natural disaster will cause a decline in the market as a whole is an example of market risk. Other sources of market risk include recessions, political turmoil, changes in interest rate and terrorist attacks. Next, unique risk or unsystematic risk. Risk is either unique or systematic. Unique risk is exposure to a particular company and is sometimes referred to as firm specific risk. Systemic risk or systematic risk is the risk of a portfolio. After all, unique risk has been diversified away. The unsystematic risk represents such component of total portfolio risk that arises on account of company-wide factors. These risks 
are firm specific and are also called as unique risk. These firm specific factors may include events such as development of a new product, labor strikes, emergence of a new competitor, etc. Since these events primarily affect the specific risk and not all firms in general, this type of risk can be either eliminated completely or reduced through diversification. In a well diversified portfolio, the unique risk of most of the stocks tend to cancel each other resulting in minimum non-market risk. In this model, the non-systematic component of the total portfolio risk variance that is attributable to firm specific factors is represented through sigma EP square. In other words, we can say that with increase in diversification, the total portfolio risk variance approaches the systematic risk which is the square of portfolio sensitivity coefficient beta p square multiplied by market portfolio variance sigma m square. Let us now discuss characteristic line, the risk and return, whether of an individual security or of a portfolio are based on two broad factors, the systematic and non-systematic. Such a bifurcation can be presented with the help of a graph, the line that decomposes the risk and return and its components is called the characteristic line. It is regression line that represents the relation between return on portfolio security and return on market portfolio over time. It can be used to calculate estimated return of a security or portfolio. The return and risk of the security is bifurcated into the following. A. Systematic component. This represents the market wide component of return and risk. It represents the association of security with the general market index and is depicted with the help of beta. Mathematically, systematic return is equal to beta i into rm dot bar. Systematic risk is equal to beta i square into sigma m square. B. Non-systematic component. This represents the company-wide components of return and risk. The non-systematic return alpha i depends upon the performance of the company. Mathematically, residual return alpha i is equal to ri dot bar minus beta i into rm dot bar. Residual risk sigma ei square is equal to sigma i square minus beta i square into sigma m square. C. Random returns. These are generated due to random factors affecting the company such as mergers, acquisitions, extraordinary profits, etc. It is generally assumed to be zero. Due to this, alpha i can be calculated as residual return or residual component of risk. Formula for characteristic line. Characteristic line showing return, ri is equal to alpha i plus beta i into rm plus ei. Equation two, where ri is equal to mean of the security i, alpha i is equal to alpha component, non-systematic return, residual return. Beta i is equal to beta of the security i, rm is equal to mean of the market or index representing the market, e is equal to residual error term which is considered as zero. Using characteristic line, a portfolio manager can estimate expected return. Characteristic line showing risk, sigma i square is equal to beta i square asterisk sigma m square plus sigma e i square equation 3, where sigma i square is equal to variance of security return i, beta i is equal to beta of the security i, sigma m square is equal to variance of market or index, sigma e i square is equal to non-systematic risk that is residual risk. Characteristic line can be presented with the help of a graph. In the figure, x axis measures the return on market portfolio and y axis measures the return on individual securities. The above graph 
shows the characteristic line. The intercept alpha is positive represents the non-systematic component of the securities return. It is that part of the securities return that is realized even if the market return is zero. The slope of the characteristic line is beta. It measures the risk of a security relative to the movements in market, that is the degree to which the securities return reacts to changes in the market return. The greater the slope of the characteristic line, that is beta coefficient, the greater is the systematic risk for an individual security. Sometimes alpha of the security is negative and return on market portfolio is zero. This relationship has been shown in the following graph. The graph showing characteristic line has been shown. Let us now recapitulate what we have learned so far. The portfolio theory divides the total portfolio risk into systematic risk and unsystematic risk. The unsystematic firm specific risk can be eliminated through diversification. The systematic risks are non-diversifiable. Characteristic line decomposes the risk and return into its components, with systematic component, non-systematic component and random returns. The possibility for an investor to experience losses due to factors that affect the overall performance of the financial market. Risk is either unique or systemic. Unique risk is exposure to a particular company and is sometimes referred to as firm specific risk. Systemic risk or systematic risk is the risk of a portfolio after all unique risk has been diversified away. It is regression line that represents the relation between return on portfolio, security and return on market portfolio over time. Systematic return is equal to beta i into rm dot bar. Systematic risk is equal to beta i square into sigma m square. Residual return alpha i is equal to r i dot bar minus beta i into r m dot bar. Residual risk sigma e i square is equal to sigma i square minus beta i square into sigma m square. Thank you.